Hello everyone. In this session, we will be talking about the Coxcomb chart. The Coxcomb chart is also called as the Florence Nightingale chart or the Nightingale Rose Diagram after the name of the creator, Florence Nightingale. If you thought she was a pioneer in modern day nursing, she had also significantly contributed to data visualization. Tableau does not have an out of box functionality to create a Coxcomb chart like a bar chart or a pie chart, but still it provides us a flexibility to create a Coxcomb chart. So we need to understand the math behind like how a Coxcomb chart is designed to come up with um, such kind of a chart in Tableau. So first we will see, look at the math of how to create it. Then we will go ahead and create the chart in Tableau. So as I was telling, since Tableau doesn't have like an out of box, out of box Coxcomb chart, we need to use uh, the leverage some of the features of Tableau like the bin and data densification to achieve what we want. So here I have like a drawn diagram. So just uh, bear with me. So here we have a circle. So this is how the Coxcomb is like a circle, right? So we uh, out here the angle is going to be so that is like 360 degrees. And uh, let's say we have to partition it to like n different number of segments. Say for example, if I'm taking 12 months, then I'm going to say 12 different segments here. And for each segment, I need to say like, how is each segment? Say, let's say this one is like one segment. So I'm going to say each segment is a combination of multiple points. So these multiple points are going to be actually the bins. So if you see between the bins, the each is going to be a straight line between the bins. It's going to be a straight line. But when you see as a whole, it is going to look like a wedge like us in, in the in the hole, it's going to be like a circle as such. So uh, we are going to see how we can create this bins and how we are going to do the number of bins and how we are going to calculate the, so we need to calculate the radius. We also need to know the area. And from the area, we need to calculate the radius. We need to calculate the angle. And uh, using the angle, we will have to define the X and the Y coordinates of the Coxcomb. So this is like a basic idea that I have given. We will go and see how we actually do it in Tableau first. This is the data source that I'm going to use. So if you see the data source, it has the number of coronavirus cases across like I have just taken for three countries, Italy, Germany and Spain. And we have the uh, we have uh, the data by at the end of every week and we have the confirmed death and the recovered number of cases. And if you see be, be, uh, from week on week, we will have like uh, what is the number of cases per that week, say, for example, in the normal one that we have it is like a running sum so if we are going to take the data it is better to uh, do that at the excel sheet level so where we are doing like at the end at uh, end of each week what is the data so it's not a running sum it is for each week what is the data that is what we are going to have as the data source so this will be our data source that we will be using for our uh, coxcomb chart so here i have gone to tableau and then i'm going to choose the source file that we just checked a minute back and then now i'm going to change the last three columns the confirmed death and the um, recovered i just i'm just thinking we can do it we can pivot this and create a rename it as case type and case values or just the cases So the next uh, data source that I want is like to create the bins. So the bins is something like uh, where we are going to say this is the total number of um, partitions that I want for a particular uh, wedge. So I'm going to call another file. So if you if I just I just want to open this and show the file, it just has two values. It just has a uh, name of a field called as path and then it has one and 102. So I feel 102 is what uh, it is gives us a good uh, circle shape. So we are going to go with the uh, one and 102. So we just have the first uh, number and the last number that is 102. So we are going to create 102 bins. So we just have these two numbers. Now we are going to create a cross join. So how we create a cross join in Tableau is like we just have to say uh, we can just give like anything like we can just say like one equal to one. So the moment we do that, we create a join calculation, say one is equal to one. So what happens is uh, we will get a cross join between the two data sets. 
so this is what we require so this is our first step next is we will go into the sheet and here if you see we need to create a few columns called we need to create a few calculated field so the first okay first let's do with the path so let's uh, change the path into we have to create bins and let's give the bin size as one so that's the first thing that we do and then the next is like we'll have to create a calculated field called as index and it's just nothing but it's going to have the index so index is something which will happen like uh, for each of the partitions say for example you are partitioning only for that one where so we'll say for example 102 then uh, we are going to have if you're going to have an index there it's going to be 102 but if you're going to have the for the whole uh, circle then say for example you are going to partition the number of segments is going to be 12 for 12 months then the index is going to be 12 there so we need to have a couple of more index so we can use it at various different places so i'm going to go ahead and create a couple of more indexes here one we are going to call it as edges but it's going to have the same uh, index function and the other one we are going to call it as account which will also have the index as the function so these are the first things that we need to do. The next, uh, we are going to create a column called as number of segments. Say for example, if you're going to take a year, the number of uh, segments is 12 and we have to take the number as 12. So we need 12 different segments. So in this case, we are going to do week on week. Uh, so we will see how many segments that comes to. So the number of segments is going to be the window max of of the count which is nothing but the index so this is one of the first uh, calculated field that we'll create then we'll have to create one more field called as the sum of cases which we will be using and this will uh, be nothing but window max sum of cases then we will have to go ahead and create the radius and the angle if you remember uh, we saw like a area of a circle is pi r square so if you take the r then it is going to be root of area area divided by pi. so in this case is in this case we are going to take the sum of cases as the area yeah, so we are going to create a calculated field called as radius and it is going to be the square root of sum of cases <clears throat> divided by pi so this is going to be our radius the next one we have to go ahead and create is the angle so we need to so for each of the bins we need to find out what was the angle say for example if you remember the previous uh, picture that i had drawn if you say if you take one particular wedge there are like 102 bins so the first bin is going to be point number zero that will start at the uh, middle of the circle so that's going to be zero then we will go to the um, next uh, point so we will be uh, taking the 102 points in that manner so we will so the next thing we have to create is an angle for each of the bins so what we are talking about the bin here angle is here is only for each and every bin that we are going to calculate so for if there are like say for example 10 partitions and if there are like 100 uh, bins in one uh, partition then it's going to be um, 100 into 10 that's the total number of uh, bins angles that we will be doing here so we will be uh, going into the angle so the angle is nothing but the edges so we will uh, see how this works as we go ahead 
so we are going to say edges minus one so for example if for the first bin it is going to give the value as one minus one that is zero and then uh, so it is going to be zero when we initially start then it will it will go and it will keep on adding we will see how it works out okay i think i got to rename this the capital So we are good uh, with the creating the angle right now. So the next thing that we need to create is the X and the Y coordinates. So let me go ahead and create the X and the Y coordinates. So if you uh, know that for a circle, the X, co X is like the R cost, X is R cost theta and Y is equal to R sine theta. So we are going to leverage the same thing here. So uh, let me go and uh, give the, uh, calculation for this so where here we are saying if the index is 1 or index is equal to max uh, index is equal to going to be 1 or 2 that is the window maximum of index then we are just going to say it as 0 so if you remember the uh, picture that I had drawn before so we, we are taking for the point number 1 then it is going to be 0 and if for, for the point number uh, 102 it is going to be 0 so we are going to calculate the uh, partitions angle only for the partitions which are in between them so that's why we are using this so if the first and the last then we are going to say it as zero then else we are going to use the r cos theta fu function here to get the x the same way we are going to calculate the y value so y is equal is going to be r sin theta but it also works it is also the same thing which is going to uh, calculate the make it as sign instead of the cos so we are good with all the calculations right now. The next thing we are going to go ahead is to create our uh, chart. Okay, one thing which I missed out is to, we have to change the path into, we convert it in, into a dimension. Also for the path, let's uh, calculate the, let's move to the and make sure it is showing all the missing values before we start doing it. Okay. So let's move the required things first. Let's move the X into the uh, columns and Y into the rows. Now uh, let's move the date into the color. And uh, we are doing, we have the data like a uh, week on week. So we'll just uh, do it as a week number. Then we need to move the case type. So select both, uh, use both shift and control and then move it into the color. So you will get both there. And then um, after this, we would require the path bin. The path bin has to go into our, we'll, let's change it into a polygon. So then we will move the path into the path bin. So then we need to add the sum of cases. The sum of cases is going to be our detail. I mean, our tooltip. Let's also add the country. Let's just add a tell here. So next we are going to sort uh, and apply the other uh, calculations. So where we'll sort the week by ascending just keep it as the data source order and uh, the case type we will sort it by the uh, field as the sum of cases so these are the two sorts that we need to do and then let's go into the columns so for for how x is calculated so let's go into the edit table calculation so if we go here if we let's take x x is uh, we have to compute it using the path and the bin then let's uh, the index is also calculated using the path and the bin. So let's uh, select specific dimensions and select path and bin. Next, the angle. The angle is uh, calculated using the week of date. And then we'll go to the edges. The edges is also calculated using the week of date. And then we'll go to the number of segments. The number of segments is actually calculated using both pa path and the week of date. Uh, and first, it's you know, by the week of date and then by the path. And then uh, the count is uh, calculated again using the week of date. So we need to do the same thing for our um, Y as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing for Y. So um, the Y is using the path bin. 
index is using the uh, path bin and then uh, so we are just starting to get something here <laughs> so the angle using the week of date and then the edges using the week of date and then uh, the number of segments is using the um, both the week of date and the path bin with the first is going to be the week of date okay we are getting something here now and then the count is also calculated using the week of date so we have um, come to the um, we have created the chart now it's more like formatting and color so let's go here and we have the legend here we'll have to select yeah, let's go ahead and edit colors let's select for all the confirmed cases let's choose one color so let's go and uh, just going to stick with the hue circle um i'm going to select all the confirmed and give them one color in the same way we need to give the colors for the rest of the things as well so let me choose red okay for all the confirmed okay and for all that let's let me choose a lighter orange you can now uh, go ahead and explore whatever colors you feel good you can go ahead and choose them and for all the recovered i'm just going to give green Okay. I'm also going to give a border for this. So now it's almost ready for use. Uh, one more thing which we need to do is to get the sum of cases, which is also calculated so when we go here we can see what is the so we may not need all the tooltips here so whichever we don't need we can remove them off so let's go to the tooltip and uh, let's remove the path when we don't need that to be displayed we don't need the x and y coordinates to be displayed so take that off so let's uh, remove just call it as sum of cases instead of a big definition I just call it as cases so week of date so here um, we may want to not show it as like a week of date because they will not know which week it is so let's go and uh, create the date as a detail let's call the date in as, as a year. i'm going to say it as a day i'm going to say it as an exact date and let's change it to discrete so the moment you change it to discrete you will get it back so uh, this is our chart so you can go ahead and remove the headers and also add some background and the header uh, heading and things like that so I, I didn't want to do the each and every formatting here so this is the format that i have done so for example if you want to add animation to it how do you go about it so we have um the three different countries we are going to take here so for, for example here i'm let's say i'm going to take uh, germany spain and italy and then uh, so this will give me a whole it will give me the addition for all the countries here but uh, let's go and uh, do a pages here so the moment you do pages for each of the countries so for italy how it has been so let's analyze the data how it is showing here say for example um okay i think we we added the date but we had not it added into our tooltip so let's go here and add a uh, week ending week ending as date So this will give us like uh, when was the week ending? Maybe we can do a better coloring for this. Okay. 
okay so this is what it for each of the weeks and uh, if you want to add uh, animation to it so we can do it by the country so if you see for uh, italy earlier the number of confirmed cases had just risen like it has been really very high and then there has been a curve so this gives like, like a very good picture of how the how it had gone for italy uh, so after a point in time by the week of uh, 26th of april the number of recoveries are slowly increasing so this is how for italy so we have three countries here let's go into spain so spain started very uh, spain started and it got so much increased and then over a period of time they also got reduced so this is like you can see that the number of recoveries have been in one place like we can see it in like one chart that's what we are trying to what that is what is the aim of this cox comb chart so we have seen a step by step uh, procedure to create a cox comb chart uh, i think uh, you would also like to create the cox comb chart with uh, the data and uh, these are the formulas that we have used in case you want to use it as a reference and also some of the websites so uh, i just wanted to say about bora beren he had he was the first one who has created the cox comb chart in tableau and i had used references from him uh, thank you so much and uh, we'll see you in the next video